Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video I'm going to unlock Turbo Boost on Tinchar X99 dual socket motherboard using two Xeon E5 2650V3 CPUs. I have already provided detailed test results of Tinchar X99 dual in the previous video, but for those who is interested, you can see detailed specification on your screen. Unfortunately, during the test of the motherboard, I was not able to properly implement Turbo Boost Unlock on two CPUs. That's why I'm making this follow-up video. After digging a bit deeper and doing a proper research, I was able to find the proper EFI driver on Anantec forum. It turns out that for dual socket motherboard, I cannot use the same driver as for the single socket motherboard. All in all, Turbo Boost Unlock steps are exactly the same for a single socket and dual socket motherboard. The only difference is the EFI driver which has to be used for single socket motherboards it's v3.efi and for dual socket motherboards it's v3dual.efi. These are just the file names, the files can be named whatever. What's important is that driver for single socket motherboards is not compatible with the dual socket motherboards. I have already updated my Turbo Boost Unlock step-by-step -step guide, so if you're following that guide, make sure to pick the correct driver. One for single socket motherboards and another one for the dual socket motherboards. In case of Tinchar X99 Dual, I have also applied the following bias settings to make sure that the Turbo Boost Unlock configuration is working proper and stable. RC setup, advanced power management configuration, changing the following settings. Power technology to custom. IOTG setting to enable, CPU state control, package state limit set to C6 retention state, CPU C3 report disable, CPU C6 report disable, CPU advanced PM tuning energy performance BIAS energy performance tuning disable, energy performance BIAS setting performance. After using the proper EFI driver and setting those BIOS settings, I have successfully unlocked Turbo Boost on two of my Xeon E5 2650V3 CPUs, and both of them are Turbo Boosting on all of their cores to the maximum turbo speed of 3.0 GHz. I have already got a customer for the Tinsha X99 dual motherboard, I'm going to build him a workstation. To help him decide if he wants Turbo Boost Unlock or not, I performed a few benchmarks. I'm going to tell about these benchmarks in my next videos, but for now let's take a look at the few values with Turbo Boost Unlock and without Turbo Boost Unlock on Tinsha X99 Dual. Cinebench R15, Cinebench R20, Handbrake and MetaTrader 5 are all providing very similar results. Cinebench R15 with the Turbo Boost Unlock is just 9% faster. Cinebench R20 is just 4% faster, Handbrake video encoding is less than 3% faster, and MetaTrader 5 financial calculations are less than 5% faster. These are basically identical and disappointing results. I was expecting that unlocking Turbo Boost and forcing Xeon E5 2650V3 work at its maximum turbo frequency of 3.0 GHz would provide significantly better results than the default stock configuration. After the performance benchmarks, I have decided to retest VRM thermals with the Turbo Boost Unlock. Once again, I have started Prime95 stress test and was running it for one hour with the two Xeon E5 2650V3 and Turbo Boost Unlock. During the stress test, I was monitoring CPU behavior in Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, CPU frequency in Task Manager, CPU temperature and CPU voltages in CPU ID HW monitor. Unfortunately, as on any other Chinese X99 motherboard I have tested, CPU power consumption limitation settings do not work on this motherboard. Even if I increase CPU power consumption limitation in Intel XTU, the CPU is still staying within its own power consumption limitation. For E5 2650v3, this is 105 watts. During the entire test, Intel XTU was reporting that CPUs are throttling with the power consumption limitations. The CPU frequency was going as low as 2.4 GHz and sometimes boosting to 2.77 GHz. This makes me think that Tinsha X99 Dual is providing slightly excessive voltage to the CPUs, which leads to higher CPU electricity consumption and throttling. It is very disappointing, but with a such configuration making Turbo Boost Unlock does not really make much sense because you will have almost identical performance. Yes, in games the performance will be slightly better, because games do not utilize all CPU cores and probably CPU will stay at 3.0 GHz all the time, 
but such kind of motherboards are not intended to be used for gaming computers, this is more suitable for a workstation or a server. Previously testing VRMs without Turbo Boost Unlock, I have reported that the temperature was staying between 55 to 75 degrees Celsius. With the Turbo Boost Unlock maximum temperature during one hour stress test, I was able to spot with my external thermometer was 75 degrees Celsius. Even though it's 5 degrees higher than without Turbo Boost Unlock, it's still a safe value. I was testing in the worst possible condition with the motherboard placed on a cardboard box with no direct airflow over the VRM zones, and even in such conditions after one hour of Prime95 stress test we still have maximum 75 degrees Celsius. During entire stress test system was completely stable, nothing crushed, nothing overheated and CPU was not throttling due to VRM thermals. Nevertheless, if you plan to install 230W CPUs, I strongly recommend you to have direct airflow over the VRM zone. All in all, if you are planning to build a workstation using Tinshaw X99 Dual, using Linux or Windows, I think it makes no practical sense to perform Turbo Boost Unlock, especially if you keep in mind that Windows has bad behavior to remove custom EFI driver when installing major updates, Sometimes it also happens if system crashes or something goes unexpected. This is all I have for you for today. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.